What's going on guys? Just thought I'd do a review of the 64 Audio U12T. I have actually done a text review of this, so if you want to go check that out, I'll link it in the description below. But I realized I've never done a formal video review of the U12T, and I thought it's about time I got around to doing it. Now, to be clear, this isn't going to be a review so much as it is just me talking about why this is one of my favorite IMs. So yeah, I'm going to reserve the right to basically shill as much as I want in this quote-unquote review. But that being said, let's talk about why you might not want to purchase one of these 64 Audio IMs. First of all, the presentation and the accessories definitely leave something to be desired. And a prime example of this is the cable. This is not the cable that came with the U12T, it's actually the cable that came with the 64 Audio Neo. I don't have the U12T's cable anymore, I think I threw it away. Um, I honestly can't remember, but it, it doesn't matter, it, it's garbage. If you take one look at it, you can tell that this thing is... It is just not a very good cable from a material standpoint. It feels like paper, man. It feels like paper or chalk, and it just does not inspire confidence. That's all I can say. But that being said, let's talk about the sound, because that's what actually matters, and this is where the 64 audio IMs really deliver, or at least they deliver to my preferences. The U12T itself follows something of a U-shaped frequency response, and I will throw up the um, frequency response graph on screen that I measured off my coupler. And you will note that there are several lines, and that is because the 64 audio IMs, at least the U12T Neo and the um, U18T, I think, all feature the Apex modules. The Apex modules are essentially pressure release modules that sort of release the pressure that often builds up from sound waves um, in a sealed environment, namely your ear, basically, your ear canal. Um, on top of that, though, they also have another effect, and that's that they sort of mess around with the bass frequencies and the frequency response. So the M15, no, the M10 module is going to give you the least amount of bass, and it will almost completely attenuate the sub-bass shelf whereas the M15 and the M20 modules will give you more of a um, sub-bass oriented bass shelf, which is really much more to my preferences. And in fact, I use the M20 module regularly just because I'm a bit of a bass head. And speaking of which, let's talk about the bass. The U12T is running 12 balanced armatures, and when balanced armatures are in the picture, there are certain connotations or rather limitations that come to mind. And the bass is one of them. Most balanced armature items simply don't have very good bass, and that's all there is to it. But the U12T is pretty special. It neither slams as hard, nor does it have the same sort of meatiness to its transients that some of the top tier dynamic driver IMs have, like the Neo or the Sony IER Z1R. But it does carry over some desirable dynamic driver characteristics, like texture and decay, if only in moderation. And at the same time, it also maintains a lot of the um, more desirable characteristics of a balanced armature based response, namely speed and nuance. This is probably one of the best balanced armature bass responses there is in the IM world, and it's definitely the baseline with which I hold any other balanced armature um, IM to. All right, and talking about the, the frequency response itself, the sub-bass shelf levels off really, really nicely at 200 hertz, I believe. So it's almost all sub-bass oriented, and it's, none of it's gonna bleed into the mid-range. And um, moving on to the mid-range, the mid-range is actually a little bit scooped. It follows a bit of a U, uh, but it's very, very balanced. And if you look at the ear gain, it peaks at around 2K hertz, it's one of the most inoffensive mid-ranges that I've ever heard. And if you look at the frequency response, there's also a dip from two to 5K Hertz in the upper mid-range, but it's not like the type of dip that totally kills the, um, the staging and whatnot. And a good example of an IM that sort of like Fs up that dip is the um, Campfire Aura. It just doesn't do that dip very well because it peaks too early in the ear compensation. And you end up with these like really, really distant vocals, but they don't really sound any sort of correct. And don't get me wrong, I do enjoy that sense of physicality, that sense of depth an IM is able to create between um, you, the listener, and the vocalist. However, the R just doesn't do it correctly, um, and that's really all there is to it to my ears. By contrast, the U12T and the Campfire Andromeda 2020 both do this quality very well, and they really excel at projecting the image of the vocalist there in front of you. On the other hand, I know that this is something that some listeners don't like, and they think of it as a sort of like a tuning trick, which is totally fair too. It's all subjective preference. I really do like this part about the U12T's tuning though, and I also think the, the lower mid-range tonality is also really on point. It's just really, really balanced, and stringed instruments in particular, like guitars, they have a really, really crisp, dainty quality to them that I just don't really get from a lot of um, other IMs. I do think they would benefit from a little bit more note weight, a little bit more thickness, but I have the Neo for that, and the, that's just a subjective preference thing. It's just different flavors. Okay, we need to talk about the um, the treble. The treble on the U12T is very, very interesting. 64 Audio is using a what they call a TIA Super Tweeter. And what this essentially is, is an unlidded balanced armature driver that's been mounted directly to the nozzle. So by doing this, it the frequencies are essentially just shot directly into your ear, bypassing the lower and mid-range frequencies. 
The way this translates to practice, though, is actually pretty interesting. And to this end, the U12T has something of a dip after 8K hertz, so in the mid treble, and then it peaks, <laughs> like seriously peaks at 15 and 17K hertz. So the problem with this is that older listeners likely won't be able to hear it. It's a well-known fact that as we age, we lose our ability to hear the utmost highest frequencies. And as a result, the U12T might come off as dark for these listeners. On the other hand though, if you're a younger individual like myself, or you can still hear that high up in the frequency range, the U12T can almost come off as bright. And in my case, what I hear is indeed a ton of pseudo treble air, and this lends itself to the perception of exceptional micro detail up top. This is definitely a more sensitive topic, but I would be remiss if I did not cover it, as I've seen no shortage of different impressions regarding the U12T's treble. And hopefully this clears up why. Um, there are ways around this though, and you can mess around with the ear tips to sort of attenuate those high frequencies. Like the SpinFit CP145 I'm using right now, they just shoot up all those high frequencies into your ear. If you use the Final E ear tips I have on the Tia Tree here though, they will cut off some of those high frequencies. It's really just such a unique treble response that I've not heard anywhere else. It's not natural, mind you, but I really do like it quite a bit. And they, the, the way instruments decay is just, it's just beautiful on this ion. Okay, so let's talk about technical performance. As you might expect of an ion running 12 balanced armatures, the U12T is incredibly resolving. For sheer detail retrieval specifically, the U12T excels. It is probably right up there with some of the best. It's very good at picking up minute hits and just small little details that would normally fall into the, um, into the background on most other IMs. This does also have some overlap with microdynamics, something that I don't really delve into often, simply because I don't really trust myself to talk about them so much as I would other aspects of sound, which I think I can more reliably um, discern. I do think that the U12T is a pretty strong microdynamic performer too. At the same time though, I would not consider it to have the, the greatest resolution. And you might be wondering what I mean by that. Resolution is simply, to me at least, the way I define resolution is the clarity with which a note is articulated. To this end, the U12T has something of a roundness or a softness to its transient attack and the way it articulates notes. Personally, this is a quality that I enjoy quite a bit and many other listeners I know enjoy. And I suspect that it's largely to account for why so many listeners have dubbed the U12T as quote unquote analog. On the other hand though, the trade-off is that some might find the U12T lacking in energy. And it certainly doesn't help if you can't hear the upper treble peak at 15 to 17 K Hertz. And of course, as I alluded to earlier, resolution takes a small hit. The U12T isn't able to match some of the other flagship heavy hitters that I've heard in this metric specifically. Another really notable thing about the U12T is its macrodynamic ability. Macrodynamics simply refer to the decibel like shifts, like the quiet to loud transitions in a track. So when it, like a track goes from like really, really quiet and then all of a sudden it shoots up super loud. Yeah, those are the transitions that I'm talking about. You might wonder why macrodynamics are such a big deal. The analogy that I like to make is that of a roller coaster. You want to move quickly on a roller coaster, but at the same time, you also want to hit all of those dips, free falls, and peaks, or the fun is lost, right? Most balanced armature IMs are indeed very quick, but I find they fail to scale these shifts, resulting in something that I call quote unquote compression. And on the contrary, dynamic driver IMs have a tendency to sort of ride these shifts a little bit lower than they should. They're not able to hit those peaks or they're not able to move quickly enough to scale them at all. But that's just my experience and your mileage might vary, of course. Like I said, there's, there's straight up people who just can't hear this stuff and that's totally cool. One less thing for you to worry about, right? The U12T's dynamic contrast is simply stunning. There's only one other item that I've heard that really matches up and that was the Dunu Luna, which uses a beryllium dynamic driver. So yeah, some pretty special tech going on in um, that item. But at least within the balanced armature, range of IMs, I do believe the U12T has sort of the gold crown for this. And macrodynamics, at least for me personally, is something that really decides whether I like an IM or whether I will listen to it in the long run. It's a big part of that engagement factor. And it's a shame too, because I think that it's one of those things that doesn't really go discussed as often, perhaps because um, it does take a little bit longer to sort of get a feel for what, you're, what these transitions sound like and when an IM is scaling them properly. But of course, I don't want to come off as a filthy elitist or anything of the sort. And I do need to stress that if you can't hear this stuff, that is perfectly fine. Honestly, that's probably for the best, as it's just one less thing to worry about. I know that for me personally, it's ruined a lot of IMs for me, and quite frankly, there are very few IMs that make me happy nowadays. And so if you can't hear this stuff, again, all the more power to you, and I think that's probably the best way of approaching this um, more sensitive topic, I know. Okay, so it just occurred to me that I should probably have some closing thoughts on this review, like an actual conclusion, but I'm too lazy to do it, so I'm literally just going to read it verbatim off of my written review. And here it is. At its worst, the U12T is an IM that many would be forced to admit is objectively good. And really, that's the U12T's strength. It's that student that gets 90% in every subject, but can't seem to get 100% in anything. And you know what? That's exactly how I like it. 
Audio is characterized by a series of compromises. The U12T is just the IM that makes the least amount of them to my ears. There is security and confidence to be had in knowing that you have an IM that can handle most everything you throw at it. So if you are looking for one of the most well-rounded flagships on the market, or heck, you simply don't know what you want out of an IM, the U12T would be my top recommendation. And there you have it. That is the U12T in a nutshell and why it's probably one of my favorite IMs right now. I'm sure you'll want me to do some comparisons, but honestly, I got pretty tired recording this video and um, I'll probably save the comparisons for another video, maybe like a 64 audio shootout. I think that'd be pretty cool. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video review, quote unquote review, more like show review, um, informative. But yeah, if you did, be sure to smash that like button and to subscribe for future content. It really does help the channel grow. And peace out until next time.